Hello, this is your virtual life coach, Michael Lewis. Now, not too long ago, there was this very highly uh, budgeted, highly financed experiment done at an esteemed university. And what they were trying to find out is, do bean sprouts think? It's a very important matter. Uh, do bean sprouts think? Because they base this on the fact that you, you take a bunch of bean sprouts and they just start like moving in random ways. They, it doesn't seem to have any purpose in it. Like, why is it going this way when the light source is over there? Why is it going this way when, you know, whatever it is, is over there? So they they didn't understand what was going on. Then somebody had the bright idea of actually doing time-lapse photography on it. In other words, capturing like 24 hours in the life of these bean sprouts within one minute. And what they saw was a bunch of basically little kid bean sprouts playing, playing little games like, tag, you're it. Ooh, I know you got it. Oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. No, you're not. No, you're not. Boom. Ah, oh, I got you. They were playing. They were happy little bean sprouts and they were playing. They were having fun. You know, nobody knew them, knew that they were going to wind up in a salad pretty soon. But, you know, for now, they're having fun. And so my, the whole point of what I'm saying is, if it's okay for bean sprouts to have fun and get a little joy in life, even though they're going to wind up in a salad, what's wrong with you getting a little joy in your life? You know, if you're going to wind up in a salad. So uh, it's okay to get a teaspoon of pleasure every once in a while. It is. Uh, fun is everywhere. You will find it in nature as we went over. Fun involves lots of cool things. So we'll be touching on all these things. But first of all, what exactly is fun? What is fun? Nobody knows where the word comes from. The earliest meanings of the word fun were like to cheat, to hoax, to make a fool of. And indeed, in the uh, 1300s, during the you know, even before that, during the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, you you really weren't allowed to get into the Dark Ages if you were having fun. They 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 didn't let you in. You had to be serious and somber and ready to be tortured and all like that. But there was this one guy named Till Eulenspiegel, and he became very famous because he played many merry pranks. He was just a, a merry fellow, and and he played lots of merry pranks that that you know, made fools of people and made other people laugh. And he wound up getting hung because he made a fool out of the wrong person. Um, so some people say he died of the plague. In in any case, he came to a bad end. Um, so we definitely have more fun these days. Uh, there's no surprise there. Um, fun means to do stuff without having to explain why. Pleasurable stuff without having to explain why. You did a lot of this when you were a little kid. You remember that those days, playing tag and whatever. How about this? Can you remember your favorite playmate when you were a little kid? Yeah, him or her, that 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 person. Yeah, I bet you still have fond memories of that person now. Well, there it is. These are treasured moments that you that you have. At the age of eighty, went back to visit. Uh, the Isle of Lang off the coast of Scotland. Uh, it was where he was born way back in the 1890s. And um, his family had emigrated to the United States when he was five years old. So this was the first time he'd been there in like 80 years. And um, he's saying, yeah, this is the old well we used to drink from. And that's the old uh, church that we used to go to. And that's the old mill and so forth. And, and they stopped in his tracks. And he saw this old woman way, way down at the end of the street, barely visible. And she stopped in her tracks and they recognized each other and they ran to each other and they embraced. It was his old playmate from when he was five years old, 80 years earlier. She remembered him. He remembered her. And the, the years just melted away. So that's how important fun is. That's how important it is to, to get some pleasure out of things. Now, there's two kinds of fun. There's recreational fun. You know, let's go out for the weekend and 
ride on Magic Mountain or whatever. And then there's livingness fun, fun just in the day-to-day -day time of living. Both of these involve pleasure and enjoyment. Pleasure is something that won't go away. It won't. You will never forget pleasure. It's what makes life worth living. So let's respect it. Let's respect pleasure. It has all kinds of stuff associated with it, the very stuff of life itself. So pleasure bears a lot on your continued survival. And pleasure can be manufactured so that you don't need reality if reality doesn't seem particularly pleasant today. You can create your pleasure for yourself. You can make illusions for yourself. You can pretend. Let's pretend I'm a lawyer and you're Santa Claus. Let's pretend I'm a nun and, and you're an accountant. Let's pretend you're a little kid and I'm a giant. Uh, let's pretend you're a presidential candidate and I'm the other presidential candidate. And let's um, not do that. So here's where it gets into non-serious, non-importance. Those two things, non-serious and non-important. If you're in a career where everything is assigned crucial importance and seriousness by yourself or by others, you are not going to have fun in that career. You're just not. No matter how well-trained you are, no matter how skilled you are, you are not going to have fun in that career. And so we get into importance, the concept of importance. And if everything is important, you're not going to have much fun. And if nothing is important at all, you're going to be in apathy and you're not going to have fun either. So we have to have a balance. And the point that I'm making is you don't have to take a day off to have fun. Your work should be fun. Your life should be fun. Any unfun aspects of it mean that somehow your power of choice, your ability to choose between doing one thing and doing another thing has been overwhelmed. You're doing something that is not by your consent. You're doing something not of your own choice. And people don't like that. Things will keep, will start getting solider and solider and more and more important. The more you spend your days doing something where you have no power of choice and you have to do it. And what's going to happen is the importance will get so grand and so big and so huge that you will start screwing things up and you'll start screwing your life up and you'll be unhappy. Think of a time in your life when you were not having any fun. There it is, it's right in front of your face, yeah. Now, at that time, was your power of choice being just a little bit blocked? Think of a time now when you were having a total blast, when you were really in the zone, when you were really zoom, 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 zoom. Now, I'll bet that at that point, you were in full control. You had full power of choice over everything that you did. Yes, of course, yes. You watch a Looney Tunes cartoon talking about importance then. There's Roadrunner, there's Wiley e. Coyote. Do you realize what would really happen in real life if the stuff that happens to Wiley e. Coyote actually happens? You know, like getting hit on the head from a by a 350 foot ton anvil acme falling off a cliff or or something like that? Or or what would really be the consequences of any of that stuff that you see on the Three Stooges or any slapstick comedy that people of my generation may remember, they would be gross, horrific, ghastly, blood-soaked tragedies. No self-respecting parent would let their kid watch something like that. But it's okay to watch it because la, 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 it's not really happening. It's a game. It's dress up time. Da 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 da. People will do things that they love over things that make them money. Fun is something that everybody loves. There's a degree of fun in making money, yes, but not like doing something that you love. 
So if you're doing something with an awareness that you're playing a game, that this is a game that you're playing, it's something that you choose to do. It's got that aspect of, well, today I'm going to be a lawyer at a firm. And you actually are a lawyer at a firm. And it's going to be fun. It's giddy. It's great. And you can get into a state that maybe you can vaguely remember from when you were a little kid, when you were really into pretending and playing. And that is what we call ecstasy. What is ecstasy? I'll tell you. The dictionary defines it as an overwhelming feeling of great happiness or joyful excitement. And it comes from the Greek ecstasis, which means literally standing outside yourself. Yes. And I'm sure you can remember possibly having that feeling occasionally as a little kid. You're just so excited. You're like, Woo! you know, you weren't anywhere near like yourself, your body. You're just out there. You're as big as the whole universe and, and you could conquer everything. And it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. So we've got these elements that we've covered so far of fun. And that's play, pretend, pleasure, games, of course, laughter, unimportance, power of choice, interest is in there too, happiness, and ecstasy. These are all elements, but there are two more very, very key elements that we're going to spend a little time on. And those are surprise and mistakes, errors. Surprise and mistakes, errors. Surprise is an interesting word. It comes actually not from an old Latin word, but from a complete sentence. And that sentence means the sudden and unexpected seizing of a palace. Rah! It's like, what? They seized my palace. Ah! It's a surprise. We go to the movies and we love surprise, suspense, plot twists that we weren't expecting that came out of nowhere, rude awakenings. Oh my God, really? They all produce interest and therefore purpose in life. Luke, I am your father. Where did that come from? Why are you kissing her? She just stabbed your brother. Oh my God. Loved Rebecca. Do you think I loved Rebecca? I didn't love Rebecca. I hated her. That's from an old movie called Rebecca. You know, I I was working with this guy who had everything in life. He he was a multimillionaire. He was at the top of his profession. And I asked him, how are you doing today? And he said, well, I could make another dollar or I could have another drink. This guy was not having any fun. He had everything, you know, you could look at this guy from, a, from outside and you could say, this guy has it all. And he did have it all, except he was having no fun whatsoever. There was no surprise in his, in his life. There weren't even any mistakes in his life, nothing. The only time I could get a rise out of him was when we were all eating at a restaurant me and my wife and him and his wife and the kid in the next booth. There's a little kid in the next uh, booth going, now, 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 now. It's very aggravating. The little kid was just going, now, 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 now. So the waiter comes to take our order. And 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 the waiter asked me what I'd like. And I said, could you please assassinate that child? And the guy just fell over laughing. Um because he wasn't expecting that. I put I put a little teaspoon of joy and fun into his life. That is surprise. A lot of humor is based on surprise. That's why you have a punchline that is so funny because you're not expecting it. So that's surprise. So that leaves us one final element of fun and pleasure. And that is mistakes, goofs. What does that mean? Well, if you take a look at any fun, action, and tragedy, those three things, fun, action, and tragedy, they all start with some kind of mistake, some kind of error. Let's bring it more home with some examples. Example of a tragedy. 
Romeo and Juliet. The message didn't get through in time to let Romeo know that she's not really going to be dead. She's just faking dead. But it doesn't get through to him, so there's a tragedy. Now, the funny thing about that is that twist it a little bit this way, and you have a great sitcom, a terrific sitcom. What? He didn't know? Oh, my God. You know, you can see how that works. It could have very, very easily been, been a, a sitcom. Now, here's an example of action beginning with a mistake. Is your three-year-old runs into heavy traffic. That's a mistake. You're not just going to sit there and go, oh, well, isn't that interesting? My three-year-old just ran into traffic. No, you're going to run out there and you're going to grab him. Definitely going to go into action. Now, funniness and fun, a lot of it starts with a mistake. I love Lucy, Jack Benny, Dick Van Dyke, I'm trying to think of somebody from a later generation, but I can't. So, but these guys made a living making mistakes. They made a living making mistakes and you just howled with laughter at them, you know? Uh, you're watching a baseball game and it's the bottom of the ninth and your team is up. You're behind by a run and you got a guy on first base and the hitter's got two strikes on him. The pitcher makes a mistake and leaves the ball right over the plate. Boom, the hitter hits a home run and you win the game. It was a mistake and you, if you're rooting for your team, had fun. The other, the other guys aren't having a lot of fun, but it's just interesting. So how are you gonna have some fun? How are you gonna put a teaspoon of pleasure into your life? Well, one thing is you need to know enough about what you're doing in order to get rid of any danger or worry or importance. And you have to be able to be in a position where you can and knowingly make decisions and have a power of choice. Am I going to go to work today or am I not going to go to work today? Am I going to go plant petunias today in my shoes or am I going to go and... Uh, pick the um, pitted prunes out of prune pits or whatever my job is today. How else? Be able to be surprised, be willing to be surprised. Well, what if you're not having a lot of fun right now? Well, you know, there's no law against manufacturing some fun for yourself. Um, I, for example, realized that I have no uh, Scrabble playing teddy bears in my house. None. So I set that up. If you go into my next room right now, if you choose to, you will see uh, a table set up with Scrabble and my teddy bears. I've got three teddy bears playing an intense game of Scrabble there. And, you know, they're using words like, you know, polar and Winnie and Pooh and Yogi, you know, anything that relates to bears, Kodiak, Grizzly, and so forth. It's, it's, it's a really... A really tight game. Every time I go there, somebody's come up with something new. So remember, you've got a lot of things to choose from. You've got pleasure, games, play, pretend, laughter, unimportance, power of choice, happiness, errors, surprise, and ecstasy. Hey, it's your birthday. Have fun. And that's all I have to say for now. So until next time, Love each other, take your vitamins, observe posted speed limits, play nice, and never lose sight of who you are. Never, 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 never lose sight of who you are. So long for now.